All right, everybody. Hello and welcome. As always, I am Sean, this uneducated gamer playing Football Manager 2015. Following on with our Australian Dynasty series. In that last episode, we played both Melbourne Victory and Western Sydney Wanderers. Two one-all draws in those games. We were pretty good in both, to be fair. Um, so unlucky to not get the results there. And even unluckier in the last game I just played off-screen, we went 2-0 up inside 15 minutes. The Adam Taggart show ran right. He picked up a goal and an assist. Uh, he was very, very good, as was Dario Vidicic for the majority of the game. However, uh, Wellington came out in the second half. They were a little bit better. They didn't do too much in the first half, but it was Shane Liera giving away a penalty for a deliberate handball in the box, picking up a first yellow. And then literally a minute later, after he did that, he uh, put in a sliding challenge at the top of the box, gave away a free kick, and he picked up his second yellow. So when we went down to 10 men, they absolutely peppered the goal. I think they probably had at half time two shots, two on target. And we had about 10 to 4. Uh, but then once we down, went down to 10 men, we just struggled. I uh, tried to do my best with the three subs that I made. and But unfortunately, we just couldn't hold on. I took off Taggart as well. I shouldn't have done that. I should have left him out there. He was our best player by a mile at that stage. So disappointing. Another draw for us, which means we've got nine draws so far for the season, which is just... Or 10 draws, sorry, so far for this season, which is just insane. Uh, so we're sitting in fourth position in the table, though we do have a game in hand on both Wanderers and Adelaide in front of us. Western Sydney, since playing us, have sort of capitulated a little bit. They were comfortably a few points ahead, and we've slowly caught up to them. But now a win could see us move as high as second in the table, though we do. We, uh, Brisbane also have to play today as well. Still got the best defensive record despite conceding a few in our last few games. Uh, it's just scoring where we've had the most difficulty. We've actually scored the least of any team in the division, so we need to be a bit better. And we are coming up against a Perth side who we have beaten already once this season. Twice this season? Have we played Perth twice? No, just the once. So we will play them again before the year is out, which is very strange that all those fixtures have been left until later in the year. So we beat him 1-0 last time out. Dario Vidicic with the goal in that game, and it was a good victory for us if I think back long enough. Um, so second time, we're going to play them home. Uh, we will play them away for the last game of the season. They are currently sitting in ninth. We will be without Shane Leary. It remains to be seen if Reese Williams will be back in time to play in this game. He has had a bit of an injury. But you can see them sitting down here in ninth with only 19 points. A win could see them move as high as seventh position and get them back into the finals contention, but... Yeah, really, this is a game that we should be winning. Andy Kerr will be one that we'll have to watch out for up top. Let's clear the selection, and I might even go auto-select and see what they suggest for this one. They've gone with Grucho, Vitasic, and Taggart up front. It's hard to argue with that. Melling and Hurd. Uh, you know what? I might give Grucho a rest, and we might bring Edwards in for this game. Taggart off the mark in the last game, and then I stupidly substituted him. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, Zulo's working his way back into full fitness. I might actually take Clisby off. He's sitting at 91%, so he should be right. Williams and Chapman will be the partnership at the back. I'm going to move Williams to the right-hand side. And Franich at right back. Partly will hold the middle with Hurd and Melling as the midfield combination there. Yep, that seems good to me. And on the bench, we've got Stavania, Clisby, Garuccio, Retre, and Babal. I'm happy with that as well, if I'm being honest. Yep, we'll go with that. And hopefully Shane Leary's absence won't be too bad for us. I'd like to start pushing up the table. We need to get a good run of wins together. And I know we haven't lost in a long time, but we've had way too many draws. So Keo's going to play the deeper role up front. He'll be one to watch out for. Yusuf Hersey is an absolute beast. Ex-Dutch uh, under-21 international. Supernatural fitness. He will run all day on that right-hand side. And Risden's probably the best right back in the league. So they're going to be strong on that particular side. We'll see how we go. They look a bit short at left back. It looks like Thwaites going to play left back, which is in his natural position. Uh, teams such as ours should be winning this without any problem at all. No one seems to care. I went assertive instead of calm. Maybe that's why. I've strayed from my team talk formula. Maybe that's why we're drawing so much. Taggart controls here. Oh, he's got an overlapping run on the left from Vidicic, but he didn't take it. I think this is just a kickoff highlight, and it is. So in the real world, in the A-League last night was the first Melbourne derby of the season. It was a heartbreaking 3-2 loss for Melbourne City. Um, they actually came from two goals down. Robbie Corrin came off and Stefan Mort came off the bench. Oh, there you go. Edwards with a lovely front stick ball for Taggart. And his second goal of the season, he's just wriggled that one past the tell in the Perth glory goal. Yeah, as I was saying, so last night, and they came back from 2 nil down. It was a really unlucky deflected strike for the opener and then a really good header from Barbarossus. Ben Calfala crossed to him. Pretty excellent goal if you get a chance to YouTube that one. Um, and then we came back, Mort came off the bench, he picked himself up an assist for Bruno Fornaroli, who had an excellent turn and finish, 
And then he got put through from an amazing crossfield switch from Aaron Moy and finished well to make it to all. But of course, Bessart Berisha, that pain in the ass that he is, scored a 90th minute winner. Uh, yeah, it was a good run from Connor Payne on the left-hand side. It crossed across the box. Sorensen got a hand on it and it just pushed it away from all the defenders and straight to Berisha who buried that one into the back of the net. So disappointing, but they're a good team and it was a really good game. Derbies can sometimes be sketchy affairs. Vitisic takes free kick there. So Larry being out of the side means Vitisic is next in line. Maybe we should change that. Uh, Edwards goes up, puts a ball in. It looks for Vitisic on the left-hand side. It's a pun over the top. It's well dealt with, though, by Chapman. Harold and Keo were both in the area. Heard with the ball now on the right. Has a man back inside if he can find him. Zakovic goes in hard, wins the ball, though. Williams tidies up and plays forward to Malling. It's a ball into Taggart. Can he find feet? No, or can he find the finish? No, he's put that one on his left foot high and over the crossbar. But they're yet to have a shot and only 37% possession after 37 minutes, so we're not doing too badly. Zadkovic looks for a long ball over the top. That's very Perth. Kerr with a deep ball in. It's gone back stick, and that is a fantastic save from Velafi. On his right-hand side, pushes that one out for a corner. I think it was Hersey arriving in the box there. Oxborough whips in the corner. It's headed away, but only as far as Harold. Is he going to come back in, or is that the end of the highlight? He's tried to skip around one, but Pardalu gets back very well and tidies up. Here we go. Vitisic with the strike, and he's... We're just terrible at free kicks. We honestly are. I think we've had the most free kicks to the fewest goals so far this season of any side that's ever played a professional game of football anywhere. Assertively, um, you've played well so far, but there's room for improvement. It looks like Melling's responded well to that one. He has been one of our players of the season so far, I think. I think he's moved from a, like, a two-and-a-half star player at the start of the year to being like a four-star central midfielder. I know that has to do with like how good your assistant manager and scout's ability to read potential or... What is it? It's potential ability and actual ability or something like that. But yeah, he's been very good. Uh, definitely going to be starting a lot more games as we move towards the end of the season and into the future as well. We've got him on a long-term deal, which is great. Pardalu finds him now. He passes the ball on a bit of sitch, but it's cut out well by Risden. This is the concern with Perth. They're going to get him behind with two very quick strikers in Harold and Keo. But we dealt with that one pretty well. They've had their first shot of the game. Oh, I don't know if that was it. I think that was a cross that would just look like it was going on target. Laffy holds, though. Plays it out short to Franich. We do try and play out from the back whenever we can. Heard comes square to Melling. It's a good dribble forward from him, and it's a good weighted ball in behind for Edwards. Finds Taggart in the middle. Can he find the finish? No, he cannot. He's playing against his first professional side. He didn't get much of a breakthrough at Perth. He probably should have. He's a good player. Um, but then went to Newcastle and sort of tore everyone apart. Okay, so 60th minute now. We'll look to make some subs at the conclusion of this highlight. Zulo is going to play it forward now to Melling. Vitisic with the ball now. He's currently sitting second in the average, highest average rating for the competition. He has given the ball away there, though, so that's going to hurt a little bit. Played ball back into Castro, who played for Getafe in the in La Liga. He's their marquee in the real world now. Ah, shit. Yusuf Hersey with a deep ball. Vlafi had all the time in the world, and Chris Harold bobs up. At back stiff, his 13th goal of the season. That's crazy. He's not that good. All right, so Vitisic is going to come off for Garuccio. Not that I blame him for the goal or anything, but we just need to make some subs. And what are we going to do here? I might bring Retre on for Partaloo. We'll see if we can get a bit more energy at the base of midfield, if that helps at all. Assertively, you have the ability to make a difference. Assertively, you have the ability to make a difference. Okay, so one out of two. One out of two ain't bad. They've got half an hour to get us either an assist or a goal or something. We just need to stop drawing games. Look at how deep this ball is. Maybe even a touch of offside about it. It goes over Valafi's head and Harold from literally a yard out. It was probably going in whether he touched it or not. Three shots, three on target, 41% of possession. Six shots, two on target, 59%. We're a good team. We just don't finish our chances. Edwards with the ball in and it's gone straight to Thurtell. So he's held that one well. Long ball over the top here. Franich goes up well. It's going to come to Hurd. Scott Melling square in space if you can find him. No, instead he's gone down the line to Edwards. Can he find the cross? Melling with the ball now, skips past one, finds Taggart. It's a good strike. Oh, it somehow deflected to Garuccio, and he could only put it straight at Thurtell, who was miles away from the middle of the goal. Edwards whips it in, and it's hacked away by Castro. 68th minute now. Played forward to Grant. It's a long punt over the top from him. Retre knocks it down to Hurd and to Melling. Looks for a crossfield switch to Garuccio. It's flicked on towards Taggart. Ball with Zakovic now, the human highlight reel. Garuccio's won it up high, and Taggart on his left foot puts it straight at the keeper again. Why are we putting all our shots at the keeper? Zulo with the ball in. It's hit the deck and hacked away. 
French is going to tidy up, but that's the end of that highlight. If we fucking draw this game, I'm going to be so pissed off. Castro whips it in. It's hit the deck. Hersey with the strike, and I think it's hit one of our defenders there. Played up towards Taggart. Okay, let's take Taggart off. He's had his chances. I know he's on a 7.2. Babal, can you find the winner here, please? Eli Babal is actually a West Australian boy, which is where Perth is situated. He's never played there. He's only ever played in Melbourne. Oh, well, Adelaide now as well in the real world. Retro with a free kick. Oh, he's close. Probably the closest anyone's gotten so far this year. Aaron Moy did get one on target a couple of months back. Oh, shit. What is going on? We're going to draw again, aren't we? Ball into Babal. Oh, he's lost that one out to Thwaite, and I think that's just about it. It's played forward towards Keo. Back to Payich. Payich. Ah, mother fucking piece of shit. Ah, aggressive. That wasn't good enough. That's the sort of match we should be winning. They're seventh in the league. Franish gets player of the match with a 7.6, but fuck me, that's what, like our fifth draw in a row? 11th draw of the season? So he's dropped down to fifth position. Like, we could have gone top, technically, there. Well, we couldn't have, because Adelaide won, but you know what I mean. Ah, oh, thank God the league is so bloody tight, because otherwise we would be fucking ruined. Okay, so Vitasic is comfortable as a right winger. We need to get him comfortable as a left winger now. So inadvertently, in that last episode, I tried to sign Nikita Rukovitsa on a guest contract. I didn't pay attention to the dates that it was due to start, so he's going to join on a very cheap guest contract, but he's not joining until next season. So we've already got one player lined up for next year. 17 pace, 17 acceleration. He'll be a good backup player to have on the left wing. It's only for 10 games, but we'll have to wait and see. Transfer status. So he's joining us on the 13th of August for 10 matches. Um, I could probably... Yeah, who cares? Not worried about that, but I am a bit worried about this current run of draws that we're on. That's one, two, three, four in a row, and five in our last six matches. That's pathetic. We should be top of the league. Now we're going to play Adelaide, who are now top of the division. So another big, 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 big game. I'll skip ahead to that one now. If anything big happens in the week, I'll stop. Okay, so just like that, we are skipped ahead to our big game here against top of the table, Adelaide United. They are currently sitting... Where are they sitting? What am I trying to click on? Competitions. 30 points from their 18 games. So a win here would see us still be one point behind it, but we can leapfrog into second position, which we desperately need to do. We've had so many opportunities to move to the top of the table and haven't taken them with all these bloody draws that we've had for no fucking reason other than we can't consistently find the back of the net. Uh, they've been pretty good. Eight wins, six draws, four losses. So they are... We're, we're the team with the fewest losses in the league, which is bloody crazy. And they were two 1-0 defeats that really could have been avoided. But it's just the draws that have absolutely killed us. So many of these games could have been wins. So we have the team, and we definitely have the defense. We just don't have the players to put it in the back of the net. So the only thing I've done during the course of the week is started tutoring. Uh, we are getting towards the last 10 games of the season, which I think that's probably the most beneficial time to start tutoring towards the end of the year. So, uh, we've got Velafi, who's going to be tutoring Stevania. Zulo is tutoring Clisby, despite them only being like two years apart. Lowry is tutoring, who's he tutoring? Connor Chapman, because Norbe didn't want to. Uh, Williams, we can't because he's on loan. Franish didn't want to, Pardalu didn't want to. Chris Hurd is tutoring Jacob Melling. Aaron Moy is tutoring Stefan Mork. And Vitasic is tutoring Ben Garuccio. So, we've got some good ones there. Well, I'm going to try and put out what I think is the best team, despite form and fitness and all that sort of shit. So let's see who's available. Okay, so we're going to go with pretty much the same back six that we've gone with whenever they're fit. Velafi and goal, of course, still leading the league in clean sheets. Zulo, Lowry, Williams, and Franich, part of the will ankle that midfield. That's as good a back four as you're ever going to get, and I'd love to sign all four of them onto long-term deals. Melling and Hurd will continue in the middle. Melling has really made that spot his own. I think he's been fantastic for her this year. Hurd maybe needs to chip in more in terms of goals and assists and that sort of thing. Vitasic on the left, Edwards on the right, and Taggart up front. His return of two goals in four games is pretty good. It's better than anything we've been offered by Babal or Gamero. So even though everyone's pretty much on long-term deals, which we negotiated at the start of the season to get their wages down, uh, there will be players that we could probably cut our losses with at the end of the season. But we'll deal with that come the end of the game and the off-season. Another massive, massive match for us. We try and attack wherever we can, and given that we're playing at home, we should go up against these guys. They've got a very heavy Spanish influence. Previously coached by Josep Gombea, currently coached by Guillermo Amor, who is a Barcelona legend from the early 90s. And it shows in their international players. So Isaias is probably the best defensive mid in the comp. Passing retention is just absolutely amazing for him. He constantly gets like 90% passing retention. They've got Karushka, who is an ex-Argentine under-20 international. Uh, played his career 
all over the shop, was at Galatasaray for a couple of years and did really well. Somehow found his way to Adelaide United and he's been an absolute beast for them over the last four years. Miguel Polanco, Spanish winger on the other side, he'll be one to watch out for as well. Really good technical player. And who else they got? Pablo Sanchez and Costa on the bench are also Spanish as well. Big Bruce Jitter up top. He'll be a pain in the ass for us. He's a big, strong lad. He moves around pretty well. Not the greatest technical finisher or anything in the world. You can see that with only nine finishing, but he will throw himself about and be a total pain in the ass to deal with. And Craig Goodwin and Michael Moroni, two ex-Melbourne Heart players, find their way into the back line, as well as Eugene Galekovic, who is their captain and probably the best keeper in the league. So you can see why they're sitting towards the top of the table. They'll definitely have a few players to watch out for, and they're going to go head-to-head -head with our 4-3-3, which is pretty cool. Calm at home. Uh, go out there and enjoy yourselves. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's let's relax it down a little bit. Form Morale's pretty good, despite our form not being great. Edwards is relaxed by that. He's still only 20 years old, after all. And I'd love a win. I'd love a win because otherwise we fall, what, like seven or nine points or something behind Adelaide United and really getting into the last 10 games of the season, we can't be affording to give up too many more points. It's now or never as far as turning these wins, these draws into wins. Melling plays it out wide now to Vitasic who immediately cuts in. He looks for Vit oh, sorry, target over the top. Target. Tag it. What's wrong with me? Vitasic, can he strike? Oh, it's not about effort. He's playing against one of his old clubs. He's played for both... Queensland when they were known as Bri uh, what is it sorry no he's played for both Brisbane Raw when they were known as Queensland Raw and Adelaide is where he kind of found really good form actually I think there was a season where he's played 26 games and scored about 14 goals from it he was sitting in the hole as like a number 10 so an attacking midfield position it's very impressive but again he took all their free kicks and penalties and stuff so he kind of gets a pass there Three shots, zero on target. Sums up our season so far. 58% possession. Zero shots, zero on target for Adelaide United. But I guarantee once they get one, they'll probably finish it. Here's Franic now. Plays it all the way back to Valafi. Played forward to Williams, who hooks a lovely ball over the top to Edwards. He's going to get around Goodwin here. No, Goodwin's very, very quick and keeps with him. Comes square to Melling. We can start again with Pardalou, or we can go forward to Taggart. Oh, Vitasic has gotten him behind. Oh, my God. Dario, you've got to find the finish. I know you've probably been our most consistent finisher this year, but that's why I look to you in those situations to finish those chances. So Glekovic is going to take now. It's gone forward, and Melly nearly tied it up, but Larry comes forward well. He's back from suspension after getting sent off in that Wellington game, but to be fair, it's the only sending off that we've had so far this year. So I hope that I'm not jinxing that. I hope Chris Hurd isn't going to turn around and get a second yellow or anything stupid like that. Melly, lovely overlapping run by Zulu. It's a deep ball in towards Vitasic, and he's gotten the header, but it's not on target. So that's our fifth shot. Still yet to get one on target. They managed to have a shot at some point in there. We're going to go into half time. I think it about nil all. Melling's picked up a yellow as well. So that's probably going to decide our central midfield substitutions. Herd and Melling may both need to come off. We do have more can retro there. Certifly, uh, I'm happy with the performance. We haven't been bad. Like it's We've only let them have one shot. We just need to get ours on target. So... No need to be negative about it. Franich plays it forward to Edwards now. He hasn't really been involved in that much that we've done. I don't think I put a right winger on the bench, which is a concern. Garuccio might be there. Okay, Edwards looks in pain, so that's not great. He looks exhausted as well, so I might make his midfielder and a winger substitution. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so they've got their first shot on target, and it was because Franich missed the header. So, nearly a defensive mistake there, cost us a goal. Here we go, Vitasic to take a free kick. It's not on target, because we never get them on target. Okay, so off-season, target number one, someone who can take fucking free kicks. So, we're going to bring on Stefan Mork here. We'll bring him off Chris Hurd. Combination of the yellow card and the fact that he looks to have picked up a knock with his condition being so low. And we might go with Retray on the right wing. And I'll leave Taggart out there, despite him not having a good game, just because I'm concerned about making all three subs at once. So Stefan Moore seems motivated. Retro seems motivated. So good response from both of those players. If they can do anything just to get the ball over the line, I'd take a shitty 1-0 win. I just need a win. Defensively, it would look fine other than that one mistake that Ret uh, that Franich made to get Polanka that shot. But here we go now. Vitasic to take the corner. There's players in the area, but it's away by Jitte. Taggart's at the top of the box for some reason. Vitasic whips it in and Isaias hacks it away. Larry should get there first. He's got men in behind. He goes to Zulu now. 
Played to Franich on the right-hand side. Looks forward to Mork, to Melling. Or skips past one and finds Vitasic, who also skips past one. He's got a man square in Mork. Plays it forward to Retray. Bursting into the box. Gets his cross away, but a defender gets in the road and puts it out for a corner. Vitasic to take now. He's gone front stick. Larry's, or Larry looked like he was maybe going to get to that one. He doesn't. Partly finds Vitasic. He's in the corner. Can he get the cross in? It's not a bad ball, but it's gone out for a goal kick. Here we go, Vitasic. Get it on target. Dario, fuck me. Jesus Christ. How many free kicks have we had that have just gone sailing comfortably over the crossbar? We need a free kick taker. And it's not Aaron Moy. It should be Aaron Moy, but it's not. He's good at him. Mork finds Retray. Ooh, Goodwin with the challenge there. Is this going to be the free kick that we find a bloody score from? It's favouring left footer. Is Shane Larry going to take it? No, it looks like Vitasic will. To be fair, Vitasic has scored more goals this year. Oh, it's hit straight into the wall. Probably about chest height as well, so pathetic. All right, last 10. Let's get the target out there. Elab Babal, come on for Adam Taggart. Assertively, faith in you make the difference. He seems motivated. So good team talks from me today. Or lucky team talks. It really could go either way at any point. Franich has picked up a yellow card. 10 minutes to go. All right, fuck it. We're going overload. I want a winner. We need a winner because they're on top. Free kick given. Pardalu. Pardalu's going to get a yellow. So we... Oh, no, he doesn't. He just gets ticked off. Offside from Eli Babal. Vintage Babal there. Okay. 90th minute now. We're into extra time. We need a goal. Babal's peeled off to the right-hand side for whatever reason. Played to Retray. Back to Babal. Melling has Pardalu on the left. He can play it forward. And does to now to Melling. It's a lovely overlapping run from Zulo. Please find a cross. Oh, come on. That wasn't even a highlight, really. All right, a minute in now. Erich goes all the way back to Zayas at the base of the Adelaide United midfield. He plays it forward. Well done. Pardalu. All right, counter. Counter-attack. 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 Vitasic go forward. Tarek Eric does very well. Goes all the way back to Galekovic in goal. It's a long ball over the top. Melling wins his header. But it's only as far as Isaias at the base of their midfield. Malik with the ball now. Crossfield switch to Goodwin. We need to win this back and get forward as soon as we can. Oh, it's a good ball in, but Franich gets it away. Malik with the ball now. We're pressing a little bit too high. Watson finds Sanchez on the right-hand side. And Shane Lowry gives away a free kick in the 90th minute. If they fucking score here... Oh, thank God. Velafi holds on. Michael Moreno with the header there. Nearly comes back to horn his old club. Velafi with the throw out to Zulo. Plays it forward. Finds Vitasic. It's a ball over the top towards Bale. Has he gotten goal side? Oh, fuck you, Eli. Fuck you, you piece of shit. Oh, God. We're going to fucking draw again, aren't we? We're going to draw and I'm going to snap my laptop in two. Oh, you motherfucking Pete. What is wrong with this game? Why can't we find the back of the net? What is going on? I've never had such difficulty with the game ever. In terms of scoring, we're usually great. It's conceding where I usually have the problems. Um, far from pleased. Player of the match wasn't any of our players, which it very rarely has been so far this year. But Bar was fucking terrible. Ah, oh, motherfucker. The back line did well again. Zulu and Franich were our best players. Williams and Lowry both had fine games. They didn't really challenge at all. Three shots, two on target, 47%. 11 shots, only one on target. What are we doing wrong? We've been working on like our attacking movement and stuff, so I don't know exactly what's going on and what we need to change. I think it might just be a personnel issue. Or maybe we're just lacking quality in the final third. Maybe that'll be... It will decide our transfer targets. But really, that's what's costing us the title at the moment. It's not the fact that we're not playing with... We're only playing with Australian nationals. We're doing fine in that respect. What's killing us is the fact that we're not finding the back of the net with any regularity. And it could see us drop as low as six spot, given that Newcastle and Wellington both have games in hand. We are better than this. A win there would have seen us go up level on points with Adelaide in... Oh, no, it wouldn't have. Sorry, we would have still been a point behind them. But we could have gone ahead of both the Wanderers and Brisbane, who now have two games in hand on us. So what games should we come back for in the next episode? Have a look at this. One, two, three, four, five draws in a row. Absolutely disgusting. We might come back again for both the Central Coast and Newcastle Jets games. Central Coast, because last time we played them, we absolutely pummeled them. Oh, no, we lost to them the first time, and then the second time, we beat them 3-0. So 
it might be the game we need to start smashing the ball into the back of the net. I'm going to have to make some changes to the team as well because clearly what we're doing isn't working. So anyway, we'll focus on that again in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry we aren't winning these games and making it more exciting. But if you have any idea while we're drawing all the time, let me know. Chuck it in the comment section. Give me your feedback. Give me some help. I will endeavor to respond to each individual comment, question, or query that I get. But more than anything, thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next episode.